Flat Earth Experiments Determining the shape of the Earth Using tools, observations, and measurements you make yourself, all in your own backyard. Part 1. Introduction Are you interested in the shape of the Earth? Is it possible to figure out the shape of our world without going into space and taking a picture? Yes. Is it possible to gather data without expensive equipment or relying on the participation of others? Yes again. We can determine the shape of our world through careful observations of the Earth, Sun, Moon, and stars. Mankind through the centuries has striven to learn as much as possible of our world, and there are two main models under discussion here. The flat Earth, or geocentric model, and the globe Earth, or heliocentric model. Let's quickly summarize the two models using round numbers for simplicity. The flat Earth model says that we live on a flat, circular, stationary world, and the Sun and Moon are small objects, 32 miles in diameter each, which move in a circle about 3,000 miles in altitude above the circular band containing the equator and the tropics of the flat world map. The Sun is a spotlight, shining down on Earth and giving us night and day, and our yearly seasons. The Moon is self-illuminated, not related to the Sun. The North Pole is at the center of the flat Earth map, and the Antarctic ice wall forms the outer perimeter of our world. The stars and planets are above, but they are either part of a dome or shine through it, or there might not be any dome at all. The globe Earth model says that the Earth is a rotating globe 25,000 miles in circumference, lit by a sun 93 million miles away, which we orbit once a year. Our Earth rotates once every 24 hours to give us our days and nights. The moon orbits the Earth about once a month and is also lit by the sun and is about 250,000 miles away. Our Earth is tilted 23 degrees, and this tilt gives us our seasons as we orbit the Sun. This tilt is relatively fixed in relation to the universe of stars, which are almost infinitely far away in terms of Earth scale. So which is it? To repeat, we can determine the shape of our world, flat or globe, through careful observations of the Earth, Sun, Moon, and stars. Let's start with observations of the Earth with the focus being on what we as laypeople can do without specialized equipment. There are three main observations you can pursue without equipment, sense of motion, visible curvature, and sight distance. If we live on a spinning ball which moves over a thousand miles per hour at the equator and over 60,000 miles an hour around the sun, do you feel the motion? If not, this supports the, sta the stationary flat earth model. If we live on a globe, shouldn't we be able to see the curvature of the horizon? Even commercial flights 40,000 feet up cannot detect the curvature of the horizon, further suggesting a flat Earth. Lastly, what about sight distance? The ancients told us of seeing ships disappear over the horizon, hull first and masts last, but the video evidence of this seems lacking, especially with today's advanced cameras. An interesting conversation surrounds images of Chicago across Lake Michigan, and an amusing back and forth can be found using this one photo. Some say, if the Earth were a globe, we shouldn't be able to see Chicago at all. But others say that if the Earth were flat, Chicago wouldn't look like it was underwater. It seems we're no closer to deciding the debate based on our observations of sense of motion, visible curvature, or sight distance. The first two rely not on measurements but human perception, while the third causes both camps to conclude that their side is right. By our three observations of the Earth, we seem to have only muddied the waters of the debate, so I propose that we focus our observations on the Sun, Moon, and stars. Before listing the suggested observations, I want to make very clear that I won't present any evidence for one side or the other in this 15 video series. I will propose an observation and describe how that observation could lead to the conclusion of either a flat earth or a globe earth. Collect your own data and make up your own mind. I'm also a teacher by training, so frequently I'll whip out my handy whiteboard to help illustrate a concept, since I never learned Photoshop. I want you to act like a serious researcher, taking meticulous field notes and duplicating your measurements in triplicate, documenting everything. What's the weather? What direction are you facing? What was the focal length of the lens when you took that photo? What's the error estimate of your measurement? If you do these things, you will have a body of data 
which can be discussed and dissected, which will help you understand the puzzle of the shape of our world. There are 14 observations I'll describe in the coming videos of this series. Four will focus on the sun, and five each will focus on the moon and stars. First, we'll look at the size, speed, path, and shape of the sun. It is very important that you never look at the sun, so we'll help you build a solar observer with just cardboard, duct tape, and aluminum foil. If you want to spend about $20, you can get some number 14 welder's glass or borrow a welder's hood from a friend. Next, we'll repeat the size and speed observations with the moon and also look at details regarding the phases of the moon, its orientation in the sky, and visible features of the moon. It will be very helpful to have a decent camera with a good zoom for these observations. Lastly, we'll focus on the stars. We'll look at the shape of the star paths across the night sky, the center of rotation, and describe what we see when we look south. Then we'll examine what we can see as much as what we can't, and then finally look at the speed of the stars, both in terms of short and long-term speed. If you have good, clear skies and a full moon, you should be able to make most of these measurements and observations in a weekend, with extended observations such as moon phases and features and star speed taking longer, with observations over a month or more. No single observation will give you the answer to the question of globe Earth or flat Earth, but with time and with enough observations, you should be able to use deductive reasoning to figure out the truth. When commenting on this or any other video, please keep an open mind and remember to be kind to each other. Practice what Stephen Covey recommends. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Let's begin.